Okay, we're live. There we go. Hey, peeps. Hey, Great everyone. to see you. We are live. I'm Mitch. I'm Philip. And we're the Kitchen Queers coming to you from San Francisco, California, where today it is 54 degrees. And sunny. And it is sunny. So it's it's kind of chill. There's a chill, even though it's 54, there's yeah. kind of a chill outside. It's been cool the last couple days. Yeah, we've been keeping the greenhouse closed because we're trying to germinate some herb seeds right now. So far, we've got the basil is coming up. The mint is coming up and the sage is coming up, but everything else is still just pots full of dirt. These things take time. <laughs> so let's say hi, Tom's Food Factory. Tom, I think he was here first today. Hi, Tom. Great to see you. And Jim from Suburban Barbecue is here. People were counting down, uh, waiting, waiting, tick, tick, tick. <laughs> let's see. Tom says where they are, 54, he says they're in the low 80s. Ooh. Where is that? Are, are, you, are you in the desert? Are you in Florida? I don't I don't remember where Tom is from, but it sounds lovely. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tom says, looks like, oh, here, I don't have to just say what Tom says. I forgot. We can show the comments. Hello, we're using StreamYard today, and we can show the comments. So Tom says, looks like meatless chili. If any Texans come, they'll say chili doesn't have beans, and then emotions get involved. You are so <laughs> No, he's right, actually, because uh, we participated in um, a chili cook-off uh, about, oh, it was about two or three years ago now, yeah. and we made chili uh, with meat and beans, and there was a big controversy over chili has beans and chili doesn't have beans, and so eventually the contest, they decided to have two winners, one with the bean recipe, one without beans recipe. And so that was, you know, how it goes there. But I'll say Tom's in Columbus. Wow, it's 80 in Columbus? That sounds awesome. Ohio? Yeah. I mean, yeah, duh. <laughs> hey, Mr. Homeowner, great to see you. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us today. Oh, we've got, we just got a box earlier. I wanted to tell Rob and uh, Bobby Joe, we got a box from Brewmate earlier, and we, we were setting up the live stream, so we haven't had time to open it. So yes. we'll do an unboxing. It's just right over there. We got two more cocktail shakers. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. I can't wait to see how cool they are because these things are great. And Ski Girly, Bobby Joe's in the house. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. And C-Mac is here. Hello. Hey, Craig. Great to see you. Craig says, chili and zebras. And th this, is just, this is just a print pattern. We're not eating zebras for dinner. Anyway, so let me just show you, uh, let's see, today what we're doing is we're going to do vegetarian three bean chili. Philip is going to bake us some cornbread mini muffins. Loaded. And then we're going to show you how to make a cocktail called the Cherry Blossom Teeny, which is actually a really different drink for us because this is a sake cocktail. And while I drink sake now and then, uh, it's not something we usually mix in our cocktails. So this is going to be, uh, uh, we've been trying this out the last couple of days. We made several different mixes of this cocktail and we came up with one that we think tastes pretty good. And it also has a nice pink color to it. So we'll show you how to make that a little bit later on in this broadcast. And let's see, uh, oh, Rob wants us to unbox the roommates now. <laughs> <laughs> I want to save it for another video because we've got to get our watch hours up, boo. So just so you know what we're drinking right now Cheers, cheers. We're having strawberry margaritas right now. So we're gonna show you how to make the cherry blossom teeny a little bit later. If we get enough positive response to these pretty pink strawberry margaritas, we'll show you how to make these two before this live stream ends. So, uh, stove on. okay, turn the stove on. We're gonna start to get the pan hot and I'm gonna keep saying hi to some of our friends. Sunset is in the house. Hey, Sunset, great to see you. Thank you for joining mm. us. I feel the wrong one. Oh. <laughs> No, that is the right one. No, this is the right one. I got that oh, one. Oh, okay. Oh, whoops. Okay. Like, <laughs> We've had no this stove for 20 years, and we still turn the wrong burner on once in a while. It's so, subtle, uh, okay? Uh, Sunset was here and was asking about, uh, as I recall, I think they were asking about these purple oven mitts and pot holders. <clears throat> and I answered... Uh, Sunset's question in the comments, but I also wanted to comment in case they didn't see that that um, these purple terry cloth hot pads and oven mitts are we've had these for about five or six years and the vendor that sold these was on Amazon, but they don't have anything like this anymore. So as soon as we find something comparable to this, we'll put a link up and then let you know that you can find these where you can find these from a reputable vendor. So I just wanted to make sure I commented about that because I really appreciated their comment about that. 
and flour, eggs, and yeast is in the mm. house. Hey, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. They are sponsoring, Cam and Teresa are sponsoring a cake, Ooh. a spring cake challenge. So we're going to have to come up with a really cool mm. cake recipe. And I'm going to count on this guy over here to come up with some fun frosting decorations for a spring themed cake. Because we think that sounds like an awesome collab and that would be so, so fun to participate in. So, and uh, Chef Sheila, Spasmatic Chef is in the house. Hey, great to see you. Thanks for coming hang out with us this afternoon. We really, really appreciate it. And in the kitchen with Karen. Hey, Miss hey, Karen. Karen, Miss Karen. She's in the house. Great to see you, Karen. Yes, we're making vegetarian chili, so there isn't any meat in this. You could make the chili exactly the same way we're going to show you, and you could add a, a protein or meat element if you decided that you like to. So what's happened so far is, um, thank you so much for joining us, Karen. It's always great to see you here. And let's see. We're, we've got this pan getting hot, and the first thing we're going to do is put in olive some oil. olive oil. I listed the recipe right below where you're watching this live stream, and I wrote a tablespoon, eh, tablespoon, two tablespoons. You can eyeball it. Olive Whatever oil you is think is best. You. Yes, it is. Oh, and let me show you what else we've got going on today. Unlike the last time we were on stove cam, we've got a split screen with close up cam, woo woo, close up stove cam. So we hope you guys enjoy the close up stove cam. And just so you know, okay, yes. Uh, hashtag spring cake 2021 mm. is what Cam and Teresa have organized from the flour, eggs, and yeast channel. Cool. And anyone can make a spring themed cake for their collaboration. And you can put it up any day during the month of May. So that's quite a broad range. If you just found out about it, there's no excuses that you can't make time because this is only April 6th and you've got all the month of May to make it happen. My birthday's in May. I know. So let's make him a spring <laughs> birthday cake and then we'll do a live stream about that. So thank you so much for that information, Cam and Teresa. We really appreciate it. And oh yes, they also, they uh, the new thing to do for collabs besides hashtags is to create a playlist, a custom playlist. Oh, yeah. And then all the videos get brought together on the channel where the collaboration originated. And that helps uh, viewers find these videos. So that's a great thing to do. Sunset says they love the close up Cam. We'll see how it goes today. How is the picture quality? How are you all seeing us today? Is everything nice and clear? It looks good on our end. It looks good here on our end, but it often looks good on our end, and then maybe not so much depending on where other people are. So anyway, uh, Cuff and Stuff Barbecue is in the house. Hey, Cuff and Stuff, great to see you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to see you here. Tom says he has an idea for Kahlua chocolate cupcakes. Ooh. Well, if you can turn I that like spring, it'll fit right into the collab. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that's gonna happen here is Philip's gonna put in the produce. And what we have here is one red onion, one red bell pepper, and two carrots. I peeled the carrots, I seeded and took out the stem and the membranes from the bell pepper, and I chopped up the onion and everything sort of in a medium-sized dice. And we're going to just pop all of this Nobody into the is. hot olive oil. Ooh, ah, sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Did you guys hear that, that sizzle? Sound. I know. Sizzle is one of our favorite sounds. Okay. Okay, so there we got the cook going on here, Pete. Ooh, Ooh I love all that color. color. I know. That looks awesome. Jim from Suburban Barbecue says, looks and sounds great. I would have to agree with you. I love to see all this color in the pan. I think that's, it's really going to be pretty to look at and it's going to taste yum up. Tom says, I think I know why sometimes your video is CRAP. Uh, you have two video streams running, and video takes a lot of bandwidth, and yep. usually bandwidth is much less than download. Yep. Absolutely. Yes, you're, you're right. That that's that, The other thing that it has to do with is that we live in a house with other tech-savvy people who use applications that are sort of bandwidth hogs. One of our housemates use an app called Slack, and it takes up so much bandwidth that whenever the Slack is on, we look like we're in the witness protection program because the quality is so bad. So we've been able to coordinate with our other housemate and 
they have agreed not to use the Slack app while we're doing a live stream. And hopefully that makes things better. But actually, as many of you know, a lot of what has to do with how much upload speed you have has to do with the connection that you have to the wires on the pole, how many other people in yeah. your neighborhood are using the internet at that moment. We're internet heavy. Yeah, we're, you know, in San Francisco, everyone's still working at home for the most part, with the exception of service industry people and frontline workers. And all of the neighbors that we know of are working at home and everybody's on the internet all day long. I mean, even if you're not working, you're binge watching Netflix. So. I know. <laughs> Okay, so Wine and Dine with Jeff is in the house. Hey, Jeff, great to see you. He's loving the two camera angles. Well, thank you, Jeff. We appreciate that feedback. And we can change things around. It's actually pretty easy with this. Uh, we can go here for the full shots. We can go over here and give you a total big close-up shot. Wah, wah. We can split the screen like this, how you've been seeing it lately. And we can also split the screen like this. So you can see everything in both screens. So I'm going to go back here to the split screen. Uh, Jeff wants to know what cocktail goes with chili. Anything. Uh, uh, yeah. Actually, right now, what we're drinking are strawberry margaritas. Uh, this is margaritas. this is not actually our cocktail of the week, though. Cheers, everyone. Beer. Mm. Beer is great with chili. Our cocktail of the week is actually called a cherry blossom teeny, and it's served martini style. We just needed to get our groove on, so we made a big margarita to get started. And we're going to show you how to make the cherry blossom teeny a little bit later in this live stream. So we're also making today vegetarian three bean chili. As you can see, this is already underway. Philip has red onion, red bell pepper, and carrots. And they're just being sautéed in olive oil in our big enamel cast iron pot. So Our Martha Stewart. Our, yes, it's our Martha Stewart enamel cast iron pot. Shout out! Yes, Martha. So let me get back over here to the comments. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, Chef Sheila from Spasmatic Chef Channel says beer goes yeah, with chili. I, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a beer earlier. Sorry. Yeah. Well, you know, we we started boozing at like 3.15 to get ready for this broadcast. That's my treat. After my yoga, is I get a beer. Hey, it's a motivator for me. I think it sounds like a great idea. Okay, so let's see now. We've got those veggies going on. What yep. we're going to do is, for those of you who missed the beginning, all of the ingredients and the ratios for the vegetarian three-bean chili are right down in the description below where you're watching this live stream. There are also a list of ingredients for the cornbread mini muffins that Philip's going to make once this gets underway. We'll start the muffins. And there's also a list of ingredients for the cherry blossom tea. So all three of the things that we're making for dinner tonight because this is going to be our dinner after we're done with this live stream are listed right down in the description below so you can easily copy and paste them into your digital recipe book so uh let's see oh darnell is in the house hey let's darnell see. uh i want to make sure i say hi to darnell hi darnell great to see you thank you for coming to join us this afternoon we really mm. appreciate it and let's see uh Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline is in the house. Hey, Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline, great to see you too. Thank you for being here this afternoon. We really appreciate it. This is it's so fun to do the live streams because we get to have instant feedback. And it really makes us feel a lot more connected to the community than when we were doing exclusively pre-recorded videos. Yeah, even though I can't hear you, I kind of feel it. Uh, well, you can feel people in the house. It's like having a, everybody's in the living room, you know, having their own cocktails and stuff and giving us feedback. Or we're back here by me. So, you know, cooking. It's anyway, just, so fun, fun. this is off to a nice yeah, sizzly our, start. Our um, onions are getting very translucent. Okay. So, so when we... Uh, so our, when you feel like the onions are ready, then we'll go on to the next thing. Okay, I think you're ready. Okay, so at, once you've got the onions translucent and the carrots and bell pepper have softened, then it's time for the garlic. And we All already right. prepared this garlic earlier. We peeled the garlic, cut off the root end, and ran it through a garlic press. Well, garlic so we're going to add the garlic right to the middle of the pot. And also, and also, jalapeno. That is an entire jalapeno pepper that I seeded and took the membranes out of. So we're just using the flesh of the jalapeno. We happen to like the flavor of jalapeno, and this they don't. It doesn't add too hot of a heat Ooh, element. Probably even better now. But if you don't like jalapeno, mm. you can leave the jalapeno out. Smell the garlic. Yeah. 
<laughs> Excuse me. Cut Food Stuff says, doing a relaxed cook for the family. That, that show always seems relaxed to me. I really enjoy watching Cup and Stuff because it's so mellow and he gives really great advice on how to put things together and all these grilling techniques. That is a really, really fun show. Thank you for being here with us today. We really appreciate it. So let's see. Uh, Jeff wants to know, what are the three beans you were using and did you start them using dried or canned? Can. Okay, the answer to that <laughs> is canned. And we have today, what we have are pinto beans, black beans and kidney beans okay so next a tablespoon of tomato paste. the tomato paste goes in once all the veggies are nice and softened nice. and sauteed did it go where it went no it's yeah, yeah just in the pan okay you done with that let me <laughs> take that off your head okay we just incorporate so, this quickly yeah we're going to quickly incorporate the tomato paste you just want to get it to coat the vegetables so jeff that was let me make sure i answered jeff questions it was pinto beans black beans and kidney beans. That's yeah. what we've got in the recipe today. And we started out with beans that were canned and we drained them and then rinsed them thoroughly with cold water because we do not want to use the liquid from the can because there's way too much sodium in the bean liquid in the can. And I don't so, get low sodium. Oh, well, low sodium just costs more expensive. And when you actually look at the label, the sodium really isn't yeah. significantly <laughs> different. So let me make sure I've said hi to everyone. Okay. Uh, right. Janine's in the house. Hey, Janine. Great to see you. She's down in SoCal. Great to see you. We actually, I've been looking at some houses in Carlsbad by where Janine lives. So next step. Veggie broth. Veggie broth or stock. Uh, this we made earlier using, um, what's the name of that? Better uh, than bouillon. That's it. Better than bouillon. So this is three cups of vegetable bouillon. And this is going to serve to deglaze all that nice, lovely brown fond off the bottom of the pan as well as be the base of creating the sauce for this chili. Mm. That smells good. It does smell good. Hey, Double ZZ Ranch is in the house. Hey, great to see you. Double ZZ is up in Oregon. Z -Z. Great to see you. What's it like up there in Oregon today? Okay, so now we've got this going on. Phillips uh, got the heat on. It's on medium. Just so you know, just a tad. Just, like it's just it's just slightly it's above medium. So we've got the uh, stock going on, and then the next thing that we want to add to the broth are the fire roasted tomatoes. And just so you know, this is what we use. This is the product that we used: fire roasted tomatoes. And the recipe calls for twenty eight ounces. These are fourteen and a half ounce cans, so I use two of these. And what we did was we took these out of the can and put them into the food processor and blended them up because while they're already kind of smushed, it, the chunks are, we don't like big chunks of tomato in our chili. So we blended it in the food processor and this is the result. And we're going to add this processed fire roasted tomato. It's like crushed tomatoes. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to add that to the pot now. Oops. Did you get, are you okay? It just passed over. That's why we were aprons. <laughs> Suburban Barbecue says gyms make a live stream better because we have several gyms in the house. Whether you hey. like Jim, Jimmy, or James, welcome all of you. We appreciate all of the gyms. I've known lots of my our fan in base. Life. Yes, we most certainly have. Okay, so let me see. Uh, uh, Double ZZ says in Oregon, it is warm, sunny, and perfect pool weather. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's what we need. We need a pool. We want to move and retire into a house or maybe a townhouse or a condo. I don't know. We'll see, but we've got to have a pool. So I want to be able to get warm. wet. Yeah. We're, I want to move to Palm Springs. I have to talk him into that. We'll see. That's a lot warmer. It's a lot warmer, not just a little bit warmer. Okay. Jeff wants to know what spices are we adding to the chili? Ooh, okay. Well, well, we're not, are we to the point of adding the spices yet? Just Actually, about. We are. Okay. Yeah. Now we're going to add the spices Spice and blend. seasoning. So, this is the spice blend. Mm -hmm. I will tell you what it is as Philip shakes it into the chili. Let me read this off to you really quick. What we have is two tablespoons of chili powder, one teaspoon of cumin, two teaspoons of dried oregano, a half a teaspoon kosher salt, and a half a teaspoon ground black pepper. 
and Philip's just going to stir those spices and seasonings into the mix. Now, you may want to adjust the seasonings on this to your personal taste. If you like things a little saltier or if you want to add a little bit more black pepper, try it this way first and then give it a taste and see what you think. You can always add more salt or black pepper later, but once it's in there, you can't take it back out again. This mixture that we've done suits our taste. I'm a big fan of black pepper, but Philip, not so much. So if it were just me, I'd probably double the black pepper if you're a black pepper fan like I am. Otherwise, just go with the half a teaspoon. And like I said before, all of the ingredients and the ratios are right down in the description below where you're watching this live stream today. So, oh my gosh, the color on that is getting really amazing. Let me give a big close-up mm, to that one. Awesome. That looks really good. The color is really mm -hmm. starting to come on nicely. That looks excellent. Okay, let's go back here to our split screen. Let me check in with... Hey, Bobby Catton's in the house. Hi, Bobby. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Great to see you as always. And oh, so many of our friends are in the house today. That is so, so cool. So what we've going on got going on for those of you who have come late, what we're working on today is a vegetarian three bean chili. And so far, Philip sauteed the produce, which was red onions, red bell pepper, and carrots. And then you also added some fresh minced garlic and a finely diced jalapeno pepper that we took the membranes and the seeds out of ahead of time. So it's not super hot. It just adds a little extra depth of flavor. Well, jalapeno. So, so that went in. Then the tomato mixture, or excuse me, then the vegetable stock, then the tomato mixture, then the spices and seasonings. And finally, we're going to add the, beans. the trio of beans. You can see here the pinto, kidney, and black beans. So that makes a nice color combination, just like the vegetables did. So we're going to pop all that. Let me take, take this off your hands. We'll get this out of the way. Ooh, there we go. And now it just is going to have to cook for a while. Okay. I'm going to bring up a few things from mm. the back counter because we have another recipe we're going to show you as well this afternoon. Once we get everything going with the chili, what needs to happen now with the chili is that we need to just bring this up to a light boil. And then once it's boiling, we're going to turn the heat all the way down to low and we're going to pop the lid on for 15 minutes. And then at the end of 15 minutes, we're going to take the lid off and cook it for 15 minutes more so it can cook down a little bit. And that's Speaking when up, yeah. the sauce will nicely thicken up. So this just needs to get a little more bubbly, bubbly. And then we'll pop the lid on and set a timer for this. So we're going to use our Smart Tro timer today. For those of you that wonder if the things that we unbox and review are actually in our kitchen being used, the answer to that is yes. We use this Smart Tro timer all the time. All the time. This is a really cool gadget. It also can be used. It has temperature probes. You can use it uh, when you're cooking meat or other things in the oven. It works really, really, really well. And I'm going to set it right now for 15 minutes. And we'll start this as soon as it's time to put the lid on. So we just want to wait for this to come up to a gentle oh, boil. Oh, I'm going to start now. Oh, well, we also need to turn on the oven. And just so you know, let me check in with the comments really quick here. Um, Rob from Mr. Homeowner Cooking and DIY, we've got the June oven right back here on the counter today where it usually sits when, when we're not using it in the dining room. And we're going to be baking the cornbread mini muffins in the June oven. So, you know, June oven is in the house for those of you who want to know. Uh, let's see. Okay. And I want to make sure I've acknowledged everyone else who's joined us. Beer Bros and Bon Appetit. Hey, it's great to see you. We haven't had them in the house for a while. Uh, they want to know if this recipe is vegan friendly as well. Yeah. Yes. Chili. There is the chili recipe that we're making today actually will be okay with most vegans. There are absolutely no animal products in this pot full of chili at all. So we called it vegetarian just because that was the recipe that we started with said vegetarian, but there's no eggs, there's no dairy, there's no cheese, there's no animal products at all. Of course, if you want to, you can garnish it with sour cream and grated cheese, which of course then it's not completely, it's not vegan anymore after that. But yes, this as it is, is actually vegan friendly unless 
uh, I, I have a vegan friend who won't eat anything out of a can. And so if that's the case with the vegan people in your life, then this won't work for that because we used canned beans for this recipe. If that's not a problem, Dry it should be okay. beans are a pain. Yes, they are a pain. First, you got to look for the rocks in the bag. Then you got to soak them overnight. Sorry. Just, you know, I'm lazy. No. Anyway. <laughs> but I remember my mother doing that. That's why I know. Let's see. Uh, Chef Sheila is talking about something about vegetarian base. To make... I'm, I'm not sure what she's referring to, but if she's talking about the stock that we used, we made the stock ourselves with boiled water and we used a better than bullion product out of a jar, which is a uh, vegetarian base. And there are no animal products in that at all. I've read that label before, so I'm pretty sure about that. So this is getting ready to come up okay. to a boil. What's your problem with yeast? Or, or that's because yeast extract. But that's, uh, but yeast is, is not well. I'm not sure. We'll have to check. So, you know, it's like. Can eat bread? No, not if it's got uh, uh, sugar in it. Processed sugar is but then, not you know, vegan. But then you put sugar in bread. Bread really is basically just flour, water, salt, and yeast. Well, it mi that might be an issue. So I'm yeast? not sure. It okay. depends on. Some, other than that, some say, vegans are more particular than others. I mean, I knew a vegan who wouldn't eat anything that was cooked in an aluminum pan. And aluminum pans have nothing to do with being vegan. So. No, but um, it's, I'd ask if you don't want to cook in an aluminum pan. Unless you like eating aluminum. Anyway. So, I don't know. We'll have to see about that. <laughs> okay, so this is actually starting to get a little bit boily. And the June oven is preheating, so we're going to be ready Is get this get a little tiny bit bubblier, and then we're going to pop the lid on this for 15 minutes. And then Philip's going to shift back here to the uh, butcher block, and then he's going to mix up our cornbread dough. So right now, what Philip is back here doing is he's getting prepared. He's going to spray the mini muffin pans with cooking spray, and in this case, canola oil, canola oil cooking spray. Takeaway signature. By the way, these muffins are not vegan. No, these actually, these muffins, just so you know, are have not vegan and, bacon and they're not vegetarian. They have cheese and bacon. So what Philip's going to show us is the basic cornbread recipe, which actually doesn't have any cheese and bacon in it, but he is going to fold in some cheese, some bacon, some jalapeno and some diced red onion, but I'll let him tell you about that. Yeah, the basic now, cornbread this, recipe doesn't have any, uh, it's, it's vegan. This is coming up, oh, wait, it has sugar as right. you can Oops. see, no. this is coming up to a boil. So let me give this a little stir. It's getting okay. boily. I think it's time to put the lid on. Okay, put the lid on it and I'll turn the heat down to low. Okay. We're gonna turn the heat down to low <laughs> and we're going to put the lid on the pan <laughs> and then we're going to start the timer. Well, let me see. It's got, got kind of a glare on it. Okay, so 15 minutes is underway. So what's going to happen next is, so the chili is underway. I need a sip of this cocktail. Mm. Cheers. We'll show you how to make the cherry blossom teeny a little bit later in this broadcast. Mmm. Mmm. Yummy. Okay. <laughs> Tom's Food Factory says vegans are like girlfriends, high maintenance. Okay, I didn't say that. I did not say that. I just repeated what someone else said. Do not blame me. <laughs> uh, T. Roy Cooks is in the house. Hey, T. Roy, great to have you here. It's always awesome to see your avatar come across our screen. So uh, T. Roy says that it sounds like Mexican cornbread is what you're making. I just call it loaded. Yeah, we call it loaded. But anyway, so let me get to the cornbread part of the situation here. Uh, we're back here at the butcher block, and I'm going to step aside just a little bit so you can see what Philip is doing. Tell us what you've got already prepared. In I have my wet and dry ingredients. This is one cup cornmeal, one cup flour, one quarter cup sugar, a tablespoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt. And all the ingredients for the loaded cornbread are right down in the description below where you're watching this live stream. Just so you know. This is one cup of milk, a third cup of oil. I use corn oil because I like corn oil. And one egg. Okay. And that's already all mixed and, up. And, that, this is, and this is the basic cornbread recipe right okay. here. Okay. So if you want to stop and not add any animal products to your cornbread, you can just use this 
basic batter. So it's sugar. Yeah. Oh, there's sugar. Okay. So it's not going to be vegan, but it, it, if you are it okay, it will be vegetarian, <laughs> but it won't be vegan because actually, for those of you that don't know, uh, granulated sugar is processed with a product called bone char, which is an animal product. And that's why vegans don't eat processed granulated white sugar. So you just added the liquid ingredients <laughs> the liquid in the, uh, to the dry ingredients. What? And what's going to happen next? Then we stir them together. Okay. Hey, Brian Veestrom's in the house. Hi, Brian. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to join us this afternoon. Since if you weren't here at the beginning of the show, we've got chili in the pot, which is cooking. It's going to be cooked covered for a total of 15 minutes. And then once we take the lid off, we're going to cook it for 15 more minutes so we can cook out some of the liquid and develop a thicker sauce for it. And while that's cooking, Philip is mixing up some cornbread batter and he's got the basic batter actually already finished. Everything okay? No, it's like just I'll scrape it down a little bit. The, uh, the spoon yeah. sometimes gets dry and stuff. You know, I want to make there we go. Well, that's looking good. Yeah. Okay, so Philip's gonna make the basic cornbread recipe that, uh, that he already told you the ingredients about and then He's going to add onion, bell pepper, bacon, and grated cheese. Ooh, our oven's already. Okay, the ready. oven's hot, so it's going to be time. So, so now tell us what you're doing. Half a cup of grated Colby Jack cheese. Okay, and you can use any kind of easily melted cheese that you want. We used grated Colby Jack because that's what we had available. And we're also putting in some... Quarter cup of finely chopped red onions. Okay, and that is finely chopped, yeah. I'd call it diced. Finely diced. Finely diced. That looks good. Tiny diced. Okay. And also next, woo -woo. tiny diced uh, green bell pepper. Green bell pepper. Okay. So you could use jalapeno here if you, you want to bump up the flavor. One. You could use a red bell pepper or an orange bell pepper if you want to introduce some more color. And last but not least, bacon. Okay. And you chopped that bacon really, really small. And how many strips of bacon was that? I don't know. It's a quarter cup. It's I a quarter was, cup. Because I made a large. Oh, I don't know what it was. Um, there were four in there. It's probably about three strips of bacon. Okay, so about three strips of bacon equals a quarter cup when it's all finely chopped up. So, oh my gosh, this looks so good. We're going to have to hold this up closer to the camera. Here, let me hold this up closer so you guys can see it. This is looking pretty tasty already, and it isn't even stirred together. So that's what we've got going on for the loaded cornbread. And meanwhile, let's have a sip of this drink. We're going to oh show God. you how to make the cherry blossom teeny a little bit later. Mmm. Mmm. These are so good. Okay, we still got 10 minutes with the lid on, and then we're gonna have 25 minutes, or excuse me, another 15 minutes with the lid off. Okay. So we've still got a little ways to go before the chili is gonna be ready to check out. So now you've stirred in the bacon, the produce, yep. and the cheese, and it's very well incorporated into the cornbread batter. That looks awesome. Okay. Uh, Brian wants to know, is that Fiesta Ware cooking pot? Uh, okay, no, actually, no. It's Martha Stewart. This is a Martha Stewart enamel cast iron stock pot. This happens to be a six quart stock pot, but this is not Fiesta Ware. Fiesta Ware makes things that you can bake in in the oven, but they do not make anything that you can use to cook on on top of the stove. But we do have Fiesta Ware back on the dish rack today. We have a whole rainbow of Fiesta plates. Now, Philip has a scoop. That's a one and a quarter inch diameter scoop. And you're gonna do what? Scoop. So one scoop. One scoop per per, per muffet. Okay. So Philip likes to call these muffets. They're mini muffins. You can call them muffets, muffalettes, whatever you want. Basically, it's cornbread loaded up with bacon, pepper, onion, onions, and cheese. and cheese. And so one scoop per muffin cup. And we have two of these small muffin pans, so we can make 24 of these babies at a time. And there'll be plenty left over, or we'll show what happens with the leftover. Yes, we will show you what happens when, uh, if you have leftover batter, exactly how to use it, because food is expensive, and you do not want to let anything go to waste, especially stuff well, that tastes yummy. good. Hey, Suzanne's in the house from hey, Suzanne's Suzanne Sweet Kitchen. Hey, Suzanne, great to see you. She made so many cute Easter things. I really oh, liked yeah. those cupcakes that you did, Suzanne, with the green frosting and then the pink peeps on top. Those were so supremely cute and perfect for Easter. Thank you for joining us, Suzanne. It's always a pleasure to have you here. No, Bobby's right. Cornbread isn't vegan today. Sorry. Yeah. 
it's actually not even vegetarian because we put <laughs> bacon and cheese in it. So you know, if you need to have a completely meatless meal, uh, you can just make the cornbread without adding the extra goodies that we added to it, like the bacon and the cheese. You can just leave that out. As long as you don't, if you if you want it, uh, that'll it'll just be vegetarian in that case because there's sugar in the cornbread recipe. So for vegan cornbread, we'll have to come up with another recipe. I mean, that would be sugar out. You could leave the sugar so, out, uh, and you can't. You can't. You could replace it with. There we go. Okay, Philip's got both muffin pans full, and those are going to get popped right back here into the June oven. Let me make sure I'm out of the way so you guys can see that going on. It should take ten minutes, maybe a couple. We'll see. So. Okay. Suzanne's got to go make herself a drink. Hey, Suzanne, yeah. <laughs> I wish you were here, girl. We Seriously. would totally make you cocktails, Suzanne. Uh, she would be so much fun to party with in the kitchen. I would love mm. to frost a cake with her while we're drinking margaritas. Wow. That would be so much fun. Now we're going to use this for the rest of it. Okay, so that's a small Pyrex glass pan, and Philip's going to spray it with some canola oil cooking spray. Like Four by six, I mean. Yeah, it's a four by six. And then the leftover, there's, as you can see, even though we made 24 mini muffins, there's still quite a bit of batter left over. And, you know, we don't want to let this go to waste. So Philip's going to make a rectangle of cornbread. And actually, what we like to do with this is save it for a day or two. And once the mini muffins are all gone, we take this large, or excuse me, small rectangle of cornbread and then cut it up in little slices and then toast it again and slather it with butter. Oh, yes. <laughs> Double toasted cornbread. That is so good. They're so like little cornbread I can't guys. wait to try it. <laughs> so Beer Bros and Bon Appetit says, if someone needs a complete vegan meal, they always have a head of lettuce in the fridge. Okay, I like that one. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so yeah, we pretty we much like always lettuce have, too. Yeah, we have <laughs> lettuce every day. We actually eat a salad every afternoon. It's uh, we used to eat potato chips every afternoon, and and that really wasn't working for our low carb weight loss food plan. So we started eating crisp, fresh vegetable salads instead. So we get that crunchiness going on that chips are always good for, but without all those high carbs and calories that we don't need. So as you can see, Philip poured the remaining cornbread batter into this small rectangle baking pan. And we'll pop this into the June oven once the mini muffins come out. So, uh, Chef Sheila wants to know, how many people are you feeding with this chili? Three. Three. There are, right now, today, there are three adults in our house. So all three of us are gonna have this for dinner. But I think what she's really asking is, how many people can you serve with this? Oh, a lot. This will be good for probably, I would say, a dozen I think bowls I was of 12, chili. 12, yeah. yeah, let me show you what we're going to serve it in. Now, Brian was asking earlier about Fiesta Ware. We've got these Fiesta Bowls. These are actually called Jumbo Chili Bowls. So we're going to fill this probably about up to there. We may add some toppings to it. So you could you could get easily a dozen nice bowls of chili out of this. So it would be enough to feed a crowd. This also saves really well in the refrigerator. That's what we do. We stash the extra part in an airtight container, and then we can eat it for either lunch or dinner or whenever someone's hungry. Over the next two or three or four days, this will stay fresh in the refrigerator, in a, like I said, in an airtight sealed container, like a Tupperware type container for five to seven days, as long as it's kept cold in the refrigerator. So, oops, sorry, I wanna put this chili bowl back in there. I just wanted to show everyone the chili bowl. Okay, so we're done with these goodies. There's our wrap. These gotta wait. These gotta bake, they're gonna be in the oven. Did we say what that was? 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes, the oven was preheated to 400 yep. degrees, and the mini muffins are gonna bake for a total of 10 minutes. Okay, let me check in with things. Oh, I would have to agree with that. Karen says she's thinking that this cornbread batter would be great to put in the oh. waffle iron and then put the chili on top. I like okay. the way you think. That's yes. why she is so popular because she has so many good ideas. Yay, Karen. I love that idea. Okay, we're going to try that. We're going to make this cornbread tomorrow over again, and I'm going to put it in the waffle iron, and we're going to see how that works out. And if it turns out good... Karen, you get credit. 
and we're going to show you how to do it on a future live stream. We actually have another waffle recipe planned out where we make low carb gluten free waffles using almond flour instead of wheat flour, and they are supremely delicious. And we load those up with bacon, peppers, onions, <laughs> cheese, kind of like the cornbread recipe. Bacon makes it better. It does. So I think that sounds so good. Hey, crazy delicious cooking is in the house. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us. We missed you too. Thanks for being here this afternoon. Just so you know, if you were late, in this big pot, we have three bean vegetarian chili, which is cooking. And in about two minutes, this lid's going to pop off and we're going to cook it down a little bit more with the lid off so the sauce thickens up for us. And uh, it's great to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. That's great to see Lindsay and Luis in the house. Awesome. Okay, let's see. I want to make sure we've said hi to everybody. It looks like we have. Okay, so uh, Sunset has a question. Does sake taste like fruit? Well, there are some sakes that are flavored, like pear sake. There's apple sake. There's peach sake. This particular sake, this is shochikubai. It's the most popular sake in America. This stuff is delicious. Now you think when it, when he heat he likes it heated. I like it heated. If I'm just and, drinking and it when plain, it heat up, I think it smells like butterscotch. I <laughs> to me, it doesn't really have a super fruit forward flavor profile. But what we're going to mix it with today, because we're going to be using some pomegranate juice as part of our cherry blossom teeny recipe. And that actually adds, that makes it, this drink is really fruity. It gets a fruity flavor and it's, it, it, it's um, cherry blossomy sort of aroma. Maybe. Okay. I think I said hi to everyone. I want to make, just make sure I'm keeping up on the chat. Okay. We really appreciate all of you being here. Thank you so much. So what's going to happen next is while the chili is still cooking, the muffins are still baking. It's going to be time to make the Cherry Blossom Teeny Cocktail because this cocktail is almost gone, so this guy's going to need another drinky poop. So I'm going to slip over here and pick up the other ingredients that we need. And By the way, goodies. this is a margarita. Oh, yeah, that's a margarita. <laughs> Strawberry margarita, just so you know. I think we mentioned that earlier, but for those of you that missed it, yeah, we've been drinking strawberry margaritas up till now. And if you want to know how to make this, I'll tell you before we're done here today. This is not our cocktail of the week, though. The Cherry Blossom Teeny is our cocktail of the week. We started drinking these because the Cherry Blossom Teenies are tiny, and we would have had to have had five of them by now. Yeah. Anyway, so we've never made a sake cocktail on our show before. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to use the Shochikubai sake. We're going to need some triple sec. We're going to use some pomegranate juice. We're going to need a little bit of lime juice. And I have here, I have Angostura aromatic bitters. You bitters. can use whatever kind of bitters you like. If you have a bitters that's a citrus base, like orange bitters, that would also taste great with this, but a little bit of bitters. Okay. Oh, there is, let me switch to the split screen really quick. That's our timer going off. So it's time. Steamy. Ooh, steamy. Okay, the cameras are probably gonna get all steamy. No, they're okay. Okay, so there you have it. Now we have a nice rolling boil. Just yeah, right there. Bang. Right, so now I'm going to set the timer again. Let me get this over here where we need to. I'm going to set this again for another 15 minutes because we need to cook this down and get the sauce thickened up. Right now it's mm. it's more like chili soup rather than chili chili. So Smell we've got really that good. all the way on low. And we're just mm. going to let that keep bubbling and bubbling and bubbling and bubbling. I love cumin. Yeah, you can really smell uh, mm, the spices, the flavor profile from this smells really, really, really good. That looks so excellent. Okay, so really quick. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, Flower Eggs and Yeast is saying that they were doing hash browns in the Waffle Iron. Oh, yeah. We've done that uh -huh, before. Yeah. We, did a, <laughs> we did a live stream with hash browns in the Waffle Iron, and they were excellent. If and, we, I, and we just saw a video of someone doing... Tater tots in the waffle we iron. We did. We saw someone putting tater tots in the waffle iron. We haven't tried that yet, but no. we are definitely <laughs> going to try that because that sounds really good to us. So, okay. What we want to do now while this is bubbling and cooking down a little bit One more. minute left. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, oh okay. It's going to be time for the mini muffins to come out. A little more. 
Yeah. Okay, well, if we're not ready with that yet, then I'll just go on to the yeah, sour drop thing. Okay, so on. the ingredients for the Cherry Blossom Teeny Cocktail are also down in the description below where you're watching this video. So I'll show you how to make this. These are going to come out in the oven not in the not too distant future. I'm going to need a couple more minutes. But meanwhile, let me mix up this drink really quick because it doesn't take very long. I'm going to run over here really fast and grab a couple of martini glasses because we like to serve this cocktail martini style. And I'm going to put some ice cubes in our shaker just so you know. Rob and Bobby Joe, yes, 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 we are using the Brewmate cocktail shaker. This is the first one. This one was gifted to us by our good friends from the Mr. Homeowner Cooking and DIY channel. Rob and Bobby Joe, thank you so much. We love the Brewmate cocktail shaker, and we just got two more delivered earlier, which we've yet to open. We're going to do a video about that in the not too distant future as well. So you may have just heard the mini muffins. The timer went off, but Philip thinks they need a little bit more time. So we're going to add two minutes. So now we'll be up to a total of twelve minutes of bake time. The edges, they're not brown on top of no, they need to go a little bit further. Yeah. They're not quite toasty roasty enough. So I'm going to grab some ice cubes from the freezer drawer. There we go. Okay, so I need these out of the way. Thank you. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is I have the jigger. We're going to use this to measure the ingredients for our cherry blossom teeny. And this larger vessel side is one ounce. This other side is a half an ounce. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add three ounces of sake to the cocktail shaker that's filled halfway with ice cubes. You okay? Yeah. So I'm going to put three ounces of sake in the cocktail shaker. Two. Three. Okay. So far, so good. Now we've got our sake in, and the next thing that we're ready for, I'm looking over here at the recipe because I've only made this drink two or three times. So, oh, the freezer isn't closed. Did you hear that little beep? This freezer and refrigerator, if you leave the doors ajar, it beeps at you and sounds an alarm. So you can't accidentally leave the refrigerator open all night, which has actually happened to us before. And if you've done that, you know that in the morning, things are not pretty in the refrigerator if the refrigerator's been open all night. So back to the cocktail. We have three ounces of sake, and I'm going to use one ounce of triple sec. Triple sec is an orange flavored liqueur. If you want to bump up the value of this cocktail, you could use Cointreau instead. I actually tried this with Benedictine. Same thing. The problem with Benedictine <laughs> is that as delicious as it tastes, it's an amber color, and so it changes the color of this cocktail, which is supposed to be sort of a blushy, pinky, reddish color. And it made the color completely different, and it really didn't work. So we went back to triple sec. So we're going to put an ounce of triple sec. And it sounds like we're still baking a little longer. They're, they're just not brown with that. two minutes. I think they're done, but I want a little more brown. Yeah, we want a little more browning. So Philip's going to give the muffins another One minute or two. One more minute. And next, then we want to also add an ounce of pomegranate juice mm. for the cherry blossom teeny. Pomegranate juice in the house. And next, I'm going to add <clears throat> a half an ounce of lime juice. So we got that going on. And next, we're going to add four dashes of the bitters. So let's just go in there. One, two, three, four. That should be sufficient. Now, the recipe that we published below in the description of this video, this is where we stopped. And that was the end of the ingredients. And then we just shook this and poured it into our serving glasses. But we found when we were making this earlier today that it wasn't really as pretty of a color as we wanted it to be. So I'm going to just give a splash of grenadine. And if you're not familiar with grenadine, this is just a simple sugar mixture. That's all it is. And it has lots of red food coloring in it. Some people think that grenadine is maraschino cherry juice, 
It's not the same product. This has nothing to do with cherries. Originally, grenadine was made from pomegranate seeds. Now it's just a bar syrup, simple syrup, if you will, sugar and water that's boiled till it's thick and then they add lots of red food coloring. So this is great for adding a little sweetness or a little color to your cocktails. So we gave a little splash to the mixture and now I'm going to use this lovely brewmate shaker and shake this cocktail really vigorously. Okay, one of my favorite things about the brewmate shaker is that because it's so well insulated, the exterior of the cocktail shaker doesn't get extremely cold like most cocktail shakers do. So you can shake for as long as you need to without it becoming so cold that you can barely hold on to it anymore. And I see right now Philip is taking the mini muffins out of the baking pan and mm -hmm. putting them out on. onto a rack. <laughs> well, sometimes they fly right out and sometimes they don't. Mm, it's okay. It'll pop out. There we go. There we go. Oh. A little bit of sticking. Oh. Okay, so what we want to do next is, like what Philip's already got underway here, we want to take the mini muffins out of the baking pan and put them on a rack so they can cool. What you don't want to do is put them on a flat plate because the steam from inside of the muffins, if it can't circulate, they'll get soggy, not unlike what happens with waffles if you put them on a plate too soon. So that's why we're putting these out on a rack so they can chill out just a little bit. So now it's time to pour the cherry blossom teeny. It's okay, you're gonna have to go around. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Ooh, look at this pretty color. Ooh, Ooh these are lovely. Now this cocktail is called a cherry blossom teeny even though it has absolutely nothing to do with cherries. It's called a cherry blossom teeny because of the color because it's this really pretty sort of blushy pink shade. And the scent is actually kind of reminiscent of cherry blossom, even though it's, there's no cherries in it. So, cherry blossom teeny cocktail. Da, 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 da. Let me check in with the chat here because I've been very, very busy over here making a drink and I don't think I said hi to everyone. Mr. Blue is in the house. Hey, hey Mr. Blue. Blue, great to see you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And Julie Gilpin's in the house. Hey, Julie. Hey, Julie. Great to see you. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. And Ellis Hansen's in the house. Hey, great to see you, Ellis. Thanks for coming to hang out with us today. Let's see. Uh, Karen says, oh, Karen, they were talking about matzah and tortillas in the chat. Ooh. Uh, that's something, that, that's a product that we don't have a lot of experience working what? with. Masa. A masa, no, yeah, yeah. That's that's not really something we know a lot about. Matzo. My mom used to make matzo balls. Okay, so what we've got going on here is the three bean chili is still here bubbling away on the stove. And we've got a few more minutes left. This is still pretty liquidy. So we may want to cook this down for even longer okay. than we think. Oh, Let me give this a little bit of a stir. There we go. That's looking pretty tasty. It smells really good in here. I wish we had smell-o-vision. This chili smells amazing. Those mini muffins smell amazing. And I can't wait to taste this lovely cherry blossom cocktail. Okay, so let me get this down. Go back here. Okay, so Philip has got our mini muffins all stacked up here on the baking rack. And then you're gonna reheat the oven again because he's gonna bake it off. that little extra uh, spot of uh, batter that we had in a rectangle pan so we can have a little bit of cornbread left over for another night. These look super good. Okay, here's our cocktails. Ooh, yeah. There's your cherry blossom teeny. So people, this is the cherry blossom teeny. Let's come over here so everyone can see how pretty this is. That's a really lovely color of pinkish red. Cheers, everyone. Mm. Mmm. Wow. This is mm. yummy. This is really different than the flavor profiles we usually create with cocktails. I like it. Yeah. It's fruity. Um, it is. You can taste the sake, but it's not sake. I guess it's sake for because, but anyway. It's not super. The sake is not dominating the drink. I'm actually getting a lot of fruity flavor, in particular. I can taste really that, taste um, the pomegranate. Right. Yeah. yeah. The bitters is just a hint. And actually, bitters, you think bitters means it's like super, super, supremely bitter. And the truth is, there's actually a lot of sweetness to bitters as well. 
Yeah, we made a cocktail that used a whole half jigger yeah. of bitters, and it was great. It was a lot, and I thought, I was surprised. oh my gosh, because <laughs> my experience with <clears throat> making cocktails that bitters is like a thing where a little bit goes a long way. Usually there's only a couple of dashes, you know, like in certain drinks. This only had four dashes, but it's just sort of rounding out the flavor profile. It's not really prominent. This is definitely a fruity cocktail, but it's not overly sweet. I don't think so anyway. How about you? Mm. Well, it's, it is sweet though. It is sweet, but it's not cloying. No. Some, I, I love sweet cocktails, and sometimes I make things that are I super sweet. The bitters helps balance out the sweetness. So it's, it's, it's a nice, round, well-rounded um, flavor. I think it's a pretty decent flavor profile. This would be something that would also mm. could also work really well. I think if you were doing it, you could do a big punch bowl full of this for a party rather oh, than yeah. make individual cocktails. Just instead of using ounces or shots, just use cups of it and make a big bowl full of it this would serve really well as a punch because it's not super boozy but it's also very flavorful and it's the kind of flavor profile that <coughs> would appeal to a lot of people i would think and if you use blue curacao and not triple set it would look purple you could make it purple we'll have to try that that's a good idea we'll try that next time we'll make a purple cherry blossom teeny and we'll call it a We'll call it a purple velvetini. I think we already made a purple velvetini cocktail once. Mmm. There we go. Bobby says now she wants a martini and she'll be right back. <laughs> yes, make a martini. Oh, Bobby. Does she like? I want to know, Bobby. Do you like gin martinis or do you like vodka martinis? Are you a classic martini drinker? Do you like to tweak it? I want to know all about her martini. Ideas. Let's see. Sunset says you need to create an entertaining book. Actually, that's not a bad plan. We've actually written four books before. Our other four books were based on photography and art. We did a fractal book. They weren't really written. They were. Well, it was photography. So yeah. there wasn't a story. There was just pictures showing different things from around San Francisco. And then we did a fractal book about 15 years ago where you designed a bunch of digital fractals. I'm a big fractal freak. And we have fractal art uh, actually in our house. And if you've watched some of our other videos, you've likely seen some of those pieces of art hanging on the wall. We have several large digitally printed gicle type paintings that Philip created uh, digitally. And then I had them printed onto canvas. And that's some of the art in our house. So, yes, uh, an entertaining book. I, you know, we've got to figure out how to turn it into an ebook because so many people read everything on their Kindle. Are there other digital devices well, now? There are plenty of things out there now for doing that. I'm still a coffee table book type of person. I love big glossy pages of full color, and I like to turn the pages slowly and just oogle over the imagery. So, but I have a cookbook that has pictures of what the food is supposed to look like. Yeah, so I go. That we, mine doesn't look like that. Right. We've got actually several cookbooks that have absolutely no pictures or illustrations well, that's at the, all. I mean, back then, you yeah. know, because you know, we back the, in the day, everything was printed in black and white. Got a Betty Crocker so cookbook expensive. and a home. Uh, we've got that Fanny Farmers thing and uh, Better Homes and Better Homes and Gardens. Yeah, we've got retro. My cookbooks. mom had one of those bed. Uh, our friend Jill from Yester Kitchen would love our cookbook collection. In fact, we actually sent her a couple of retro cookbooks we had that we didn't use. And uh, from back, you know, like in the 60s and 70s when we were little kids. Uh, let's see. Bobby says she usually makes lemon drop vodka martinis, but she Ooh. also makes gin and vermouth. And today she's getting creative. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us every detail. Okay. So as you hear, the timer is going off. That's 15 minutes that this has been cooking without the lid on. Let me get that to stop. And it still looks a little watery to me. It's a little soupy. I'd like it to be a little thicker personally. Well, then. So we're going to let this cook a little tiny bit longer. Let's have a sip of this. The cherry blossom teeny. As you can see, it's quite pretty. Now, we didn't garnish this. The original recipe we started with didn't call for that, but you could certainly garnish this with a cherry. That would be totally appropriate. Mmm. That is so, so good. Okay, so we're just going to let this cook out for a little while longer. 
We'll put that up here. Now, while that's still cooking down, I want to come over here. Let's switch this so everyone can see that it's still cooking. <laughs> lemon drop martini. Okay, Karen says, lemon drop martini is always her go-to. Oh, God, yes. And Cuff and Stuff says, let's see. Oh, go ahead. Oh, there. Okay, we got to click the right thing. Uh, watching us cook is picture enough, says Cuff and Stuff. Hey, thank you for that kind compliment. We're having a good time doing our thing here in the kitchen. And we're very pleased mm. to have the opportunity to share it with all of you. And we really appreciate everyone coming out and hanging out with us this afternoon. We always have such a good time doing these live streams. So this is going to cook for a little while longer. Why don't we taste this in the meantime? Sure. Okay, so these are the loaded cornbread mini muffins that Philip made earlier. This is uh, the cornbread recipe is listed below in the description. And then you loaded them with onion, pepper, cheese, and bacon. bacon. I can't wait to taste. Mmm. Mm. These are good. The cornbread is really soft and pillowy and mm. fluffy. Really nice. It's not the least bit dense at all. Mm. I like mm. this. There's sort of a little tiny creamy element from the cheese. And the bacon tastes great. They are mm -hmm. so good. Mm. Really, really yummy. Mm. Oh mm. my gosh, those are so mm. delicious. Mmm. These are really, 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 really good. And as you saw, they're pretty easy to put together and it didn't take very long and they were already already. So that's one of the things I like about, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated to taste good and it doesn't have to take a long time and to be good. These are really delicious. I love these mini muffins. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. So yummy. Okay, so we still got our chili going on here it's still a little bit on the watery side but we could probably taste it in the not too distant future oh yeah i mean yeah it's going to be a little bit more like a uh, chili soup okay so let me see i want to make sure i've caught up with the chat here Okay, Karen says, everything made mini size is so fun. We agree. We made uh, we made those mini shepherd's pies and oh, yeah. little ramekins. We did that back. Um, it was during the holidays. We used leftover mashed potatoes to make a uh, shepherd's pie version. And we made them in little smaller ramekins. And, yeah, I agree with Karen. Anytime you, you mini something, it gets fun and really, really super cool. So, anyway, okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Homeowner, back in the house. Hey, Rob. Okay, we got I'm the back. chili going on, Rob. And while Rob was away, we made the cherry blossantini cocktail. So cheers to you, Rob, and your lovely wife, Bobby Jo. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Mmm. It's okay. almost... I think it's... Uh, Usaki gives it sort of a, almost a spiciness. T-Roy is suggesting that more chili powder will thicken up the chili and also darken the color. Ooh. So my, it's, I, I can't say that I know that to be true because I haven't tried that. I'm going by the recipe that we've made twice before, and once we got done, it was actually right where we wanted it to be. But, of course, on a live stream, you never know what's going to happen. And this isn't quite as thick as I'd like it to be, but I don't want to do anything like add any cornstarch or anything else. I think if this just cooks down a little bit more. And then the other thing we noticed is this is like a lot of dishes that are similar to this that where when you leave it sit in the refrigerator overnight, then the next day, like all the flavors marry and oh, it yeah. gets a little thicker consistency. So this is great to eat right away, but it's also really delicious. Not unlike how stew sometimes is the second night when it's had a chance for, you know, like I say, every all the flavors to marry. Together. I always like leftover spaghetti. Because the noodles get big and fat. <laughs> okay, so we're still chilling out here, waiting for this to thicken up a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to heat up a little bit just to get it some more. Good. Bubbling going on here. Okay, so T. Roy says another tablespoon or two of chili powder is what he would do. So I'm 
going to keep that in our notes for in the future when we're trying to oh. thicken something up, adding chili Hell powder. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, you can't really have too much chili powder. It's so delicious. So thank you so we much, to Roy, for those suggestions. I make a really good enchilada sauce. Which has three tablespoons of chili powder. Yeah, that is really, really, really good. good. Bobby says a handful of masa can help thicken things up just yeah, right yes, too. Yes, yes. That's mm -hmm. an excellent suggestion. And some some people aren't crazy about using cornstarch to thicken things up. Huh. So masa would be an alternative to that, which is very easy to come by. Uh, cornstarch gives a sort of a when it thickens, it makes it sort of glazy looking, shiny. Um, another way to do it is to start with a roux, which is you know butter and or oil and flour, and then you get a whole. Uh, well, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah, well, but, I mean, yeah. T. Roy says, or just cook it longer, which yeah. is what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we're just letting it go longer to get it a little thicker. But so, you know, we should have some of this. Uh, so, let's see. Longer. Yeah, I know. We're gonna need to uh, check this out in the not too distant future. Well, we can pick it up with. So, Hello. We can thicken it up by make, putting a muffin in it. So do you want to taste a little bit of this? It's going to have to cool for a minute before we can actually eat yeah. it, right? Uh, well, you know. Do you want to put some in one of these big chili bowls? Let's do it. Okay. So for those of you that were asking about Fiesta Ware, this is a Fiesta Ware jumbo chili bowl. This color is called Peacock Blue. And this is actually a discontinued color. You can still get this bowl shape, but you can't get this color anymore, even though they do have several other shades of blue. So just so you know, giving you a quick little Fiesta Ware lesson. So let's see. We're going to have Philip put a little bit of that into the chili bowl so we can let this just start to cool off just a little bit so we can taste it. Good. Okay. So I'm going to stash this right back here really quick. We've got some spoons. We'll get ready for our tasting. I just want to let this cool down just a little tiny bit first before we get going on there. Let's see, Ellis wants to know if we've made the enchilada, enchilada recipe, enchilada sauce recipe on the air. No. No. But I should. Yes, I want him to it's do that. Really good. And then I make enchiladas. Uh -huh. Really super yummy. And the enchilada sauce is so good. I mean, you could just pour it in a glass and drink it. It's so delicious. Maybe I'd add some tequila to it. But yeah, it's it's so super yummy. You could put it on just about I, anything. I, I like to make uh, pulled pork and use pulled pork in my enchilada. T. Roy is reminding us that he has a few great chili recipes on his channel. Ooh. And yes, he does actually have a few great chili recipes on his channel. I have yet to see a recipe on the T. Roy Cooks channel that I didn't think looked delicious. T. Roy makes amazing food. That's why he has 335,000 subscribers. <laughs> Hats off to T. Roy. Woo, woo, woo. Woo. I mean, that is awesome. Yes, he has a lot of really good stuff going on over there. So, yes, we will get, Alice, we will get to making the chili recipe, or excuse me, the enchilada sauce recipe in the not too distant future. Thank you for asking about that. So, yeah, I need to do a pulled pork with Uncle Steve's shake. Yes. So that's ready. Yeah. And then we'll make the enchilada sauce. Okay, and then we'll make enchilada. Yeah, oh yeah, baby. Mm. Mm. Okay, I'm going to. What are you doing? Crumple up a muffin. Okay, Philip's going to crumple up a muffin in the bowl of chili that we're going to sample in a few minutes. I just want to say hi to Ginger Snap Kitchen. Stephanie, great boom, to see boom, you. Boom. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. And uh, Ginger Snap says she's ready for the enchilada cook along. We will bring that yeah. to you in the not too distant future. It may take a little longer than usual though, because here let me uh, let me switch over here to the split screen, so Philip can show you the bowl of chili with one of the mini muffins broken up inside of it. Now, so now what we're going to do is give this baby a taste. Okay, so let's taste it. We're gonna get a little bit of that muffin and a little bit of this chili all in one lovely hot, bite. Hot. Okay, this is very, 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 very hot. Let me just taste a little bit. Mm. Mm. Oh Ooh. my gosh. Mm. Mm. Oh. This is yummy. Your flavor profile is excellent. This tastes really, really, really delicious. Mmm. 
That is so good. Now, even though it's not as thickened up as we'd mm. like it to be, mm. it still tastes really supremely yummy. And actually, when we stir this up a little bit, it's starting to get a lot thicker than it was before. So this is actually looking quite fabulous. And the flavor profile is awesome. Ooh, supremely yummy. This is really delicious. And as you've seen, if you've been here since the beginning, this was a really easy pot of chili to pull together. Basic ingredients, everything you can find at the grocery store, nothing out of the ordinary. And the spice profile, are you okay? It's just hot. It tastes delicious. I want to have another taste of this. This is really mm. super good. Mm. Oh, yeah, this bowl got hot. Mm. This this chili in this bowl is definitely hot. It's hot. hot. Mm. So I'm going to have another yeah. spoonful no, just I mean, to I mean. make sure... It mm. tastes like perfection. Yeah, low on it. Ooh. You okay? But it's only on mine. But it's yummy. Mm. Yeah, it's like coming hot pizza. It's very, very, very <laughs> yummy. Mmm. Mm. That is so, so delicious. Oh my gosh. Chef Sheila says, it was so much fun watching you guys make dinner. Cheers to another great production. Thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you here. We really appreciate our awesome fans. And when everyone comes out to hang out with us on Tuesday afternoons, it just makes it really, really super fun. And we, uh, for a long time, we didn't do a lot of cooks here at the stove. Because, you know, we were for, you know, the first few years of our channel, we made lots of party and buffet style food. For the last year, we haven't been able to have a party or a buffet or any guests over. So we've been focusing more on things to do for your own family, hence cooking at the stove shop comforting. to make dinner. Yes, and as comforting as it can possibly mm. be. And yes, Bobby is right. It tastes yummy now. And just wait till tomorrow. Yeah. She is absolutely right. Yeah. This will be even better the second day. Ooh, and I hear the timer going off back here. That's the leftover cornbread batter that Philip put into a rectangle pan to bake because he made the 24 mini muffins and then there was still some batter left over. So because we don't like to waste food, we put it in a little rectangle pan and Philip's baking that off now. So we'll have even more cornbread. Uh, Brian says the split screens are a nice touch in your kitchen lives. You mix the views well, feels like a house party. Awesome feedback. Thanks. We really appreciate that. We're trying to put on the best show that we can with what we've got to work with. And being able to do the two different camera angles is very similar to what we used to do when we were producing a lot of pre-recorded videos, where those of you who are familiar with those knew that I love to do split screens and move back and forth between the close-up and the backed out shot. And the StreamYard software makes it very easy to do that in a live stream. So you can get a more dynamic presentation rather than just having the camera fixed on one thing through the entire broadcast. Uh, so let's see. Uh, okay, Cuff and Stuff says, thanks for what you share and have a great night. Hey, Cuff and Stuff, it's always a pleasure to have you here in our house and participating in our live stream and in the chat room. And we really appreciate that. And we can't wait to see what you're cooking up in your next video on your channel. So if you're not already familiar with Cuff and Stuff Barbecue, Tip over there after you're done watching our live. Hit that red subscribe button and check out what they've been cooking lately because they make some really yummy stuff over there. So, okay, let's see. Uh, I want to make sure thicker. I say hi to everyone. It is getting thicker. It's starting to thicken mm. up a lot now. Now, we've probably been cooking it for another 15 minutes. So this is actually, it cooked covered for 15 minutes. It's been cooking uncovered for almost half an hour. And now we're getting to the point where I'd call it uh, it's not as thick as it'll be like Bobby pointed out. Tomorrow it'll be a lot thicker. But this would be fine for serving it for dinner tonight. It's defi definitely yeah. thickened up nicely. And it smells, ah, oh, the aromas in here. Between this and the cornbread and these cocktails actually have this fruity aroma. These are so good. And they're almost all gone. We're going to have to make another one. Cheers, everyone. Let's see. Beer Bros and Bon Appetit says... Who doesn't like it thick? Meaning the chili, of course. <laughs> yes, thick sauce, thick chili, thick stew. Awesome. Thick head. Uh, let's see. <laughs> T-Roy says he likes throwing chili over Fritos. So does yeah, this yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. I love it, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Fritos with cheese. Yeah. I, 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 I put Fritos in the bowl, put the chili over it, top of cheese. 
That, that sounds really, really super good, too. I know. And extra okay. onions or pickled onions or, you know. <laughs> Come on. Okay, let's show another close-up quickly of the... There we go. Bubbling. Here. I'll Bubbling start. and sizzling. Yeah, it's getting a lot thicker now. Maybe a lot thicker. Let me Mmm, baby. Cheers, Bobby. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. I hope you're enjoying your cocktail as much as I'm enjoying the one I'm very quickly drinking down. Mmm. These are good. My only issue is that they're small. So next time I would double the recipe and use a larger martini glass. Punch bowl. So it lasts a little longer. Yeah, or let's make a whole bunch of uh, cheese. <laughs> but add a whole bunch of cheese. Hey, Ralph Jenkins is in the house. Great to see you. We hope you're doing good. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Uh, Ralph and Jess are, uh, there's several different people actually. Um, Ralph and Jess and uh, Ginger Snap Kitchen were the other people that after our video, our live last week when we built the Lego Easter Bunny Carrot House, oh. they bought a carrot house and had carrot houses on their Easter table. So kudos to you guys for doing that. I'm glad you were able to score one of those before they all sold out. Uh, and uh, T-Roy says, punch bowl, punch bowl. How about a trash can full of punch? I like your style, T-Roy. We need to top it oh. up, the uh, carrot house. Yes. Yeah, I added to it. Uh, I put the carrot house in the middle of a layout with some other landscaping. And that was the, uh, there that was the centerpiece of our Easter breakfast on Sunday. Too much steam there. <laughs> yeah, we can't, just so you know, Legos and hot temperatures don't go together because Legos are plastic and they actually have a really low melting point. So you want to be careful not to we get your Legos. We tried dyeing some white window frames, see if we could get color on them. It didn't work. The color, yeah, it took color, but also they all like shrank up and got all warped. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it, that was before they came in other colors, but the timer went off on the gym. Oh, yeah. How are we doing on that last I little bit of cornbread? That looks pretty good. It's getting there. You're going to call it done? Okay, so the last little bit of leftover cornbread batter, Philip put into a small glass Pyrex baking pan and then just baked that off the same way he did the mini muffins. Yeah. So there you can see it. Nice little mini loaf of cornbread. And we can just take this we'll out. and slice it and make little cornbread sticks. Yeah, that it, it turns out really super delicious that yeah. way. <clears throat> T. Roy says, "Let's party!" party! Well, I still have some of my old cocktail left over. We're going to have to make a new cocktail. I'm fresh out. I will make you another one as soon as we're done here. <laughs> Suzanne says, "Love it." Thank you, Suzanne. We appreciate your thoughtful and positive feedback. We love doing this show. Beer Bros and Bon Appetit says they like using day-old chili when making a taco salad. Oh, yeah. yeah. That would be so supremely, supremely good. Bobby says, whoop, whoop, T-Roy, we're partying. Everyone's partying here. Suzanne says, cheers. We say cheers. cheers. Oh, here, let me, you want some of this? Let me give you a little bit of this. It's just my strawberry margarita. I spilled, oops, I spilled. Daddy spilled, sorry. That was kind of messy, but here. Thank you, that'll tide you over till we're all done. Okay, so we're gonna just we're gonna be calling this chili done pretty soon, I'd say. It's it looks done. pretty nice and sweet or nice and thick. Mm. Oh, Jess is in the house too. Hey Jess, great to see you. I'm glad to see you and Ralph here tonight. It's always a pleasure to have both of you here. And Jess says, Yes, I love my Lego bunny carrot house. Yay. We love ours too. We're so glad you guys were able to get one before they were all gone. Uh, okay. Okay. So, uh, Rob from Mr. Homeowner cooking and DIY says, let's mix some leftover Easter ham into the chili. Okay. That would actually work really, really well. If you want to take this vegetarian chili recipe and add an animal protein, some nice, like the way you saute the ham for the omelets we have on the weekends. Well, it's just, you know, ham and bacon fat with some, uh, uh, cayenne. That would, yeah, that would you just, but what I like to do is stuff like this, it doesn't mean in it. I like to slice up hot dog. And then I fry them in a pan, make a little um, browning on them, and then add the chili or whatever else. And that's a really good way to do it. Karen says it's not a party until someone spills something. Well, then <laughs> we have a party. We <laughs> have a party over here. Party over here, people. Party over here. 
Hmm. Tom says, next day chili is a perfect topping on a breakfast burrito. Yes. Agreed. That sounds awesome. Oh, one thing I want to point out. What? We have plans of doing a white chili. Yes, we have a recipe for that, and we're going to share that in the not-too-distant yeah. future. It's made with chicken and some other really yummy ingredients. And, and, and white beans. Yeah, and they're uh, cannellini beans. So there's no tomato base to it. So you get a completely different look. It doesn't look like any chili that we've ever tried before, but it's really, really but yummy. It taste? It's mm. really, really, really yummy. So can't wait to do that. Yeah, I think this is um, about there. It's just about there. So uh, Mr. Homeowner says, sorry, didn't realize it was vegan chili. No, it, it's only... <laughs> It only has to be vegan if you want it to be. It only has to be vegetarian if that's your preference. We like to show off meatless dishes every once in a while for a lot of our friends won't eat any animal products. And so we like to have dishes in our repertoire that we can still please them when they come and sit at our if dinner you table. you get a party, you can have a big bowl of this and then have sides of different proteins that anyone could add if they wanted to add protein. Sundays with Heart is in the house. Leanne is here. Hi, Leanne. Great to see you. Thank you for coming out to join us. We hope everything is well in your kitchen. Great to see you. Uh, let's see. Sunset is suggesting a leftover chili video. I think that sounds like a really good idea, Sunset. Show what to do with chili the day after instead of just eat it in a bowl. That sounds like an excellent suggestion. Thank you for that. So let's see. Uh, Ralph says... Chili on spaghetti for Cincinnati chili. Hello. Yeah, if you're not familiar with that, Cincinnati Cincinnati chili is a big That's thing, really and it's basically chili on top of spaghetti. I mean, what's not to like about pasta and chili? That sounds excellent to us. Thank you so much, Janine. We really appreciate that. She says best wishes, and she loves our show so much. We really appreciate your thoughtful and positive feedback and that you come and spend your Tuesday afternoons with us. It's just so much fun to be able to cook and show off what we like to do here at our house. And we really, really appreciate all the feedback that we get through the chat. And thank you, everyone, for playing so nice in the chat room. We do have some very thoughtful moderators, but they usually don't have to do too much work <laughs> because everyone plays so nicely in our chat rooms. You're all very nice people. We really appreciate you. Oh, oh that's funny. Yeah, Jess says nice that... Uh, Jess says that he never ate beans until a couple of years ago because he didn't like the taste or the texture, but then he quit smoking and now he loves chili. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting. Well, you could you could speak to that a little bit. A lot of times, the people that I've known, once they stop smoking cigarettes, their taste buds change and food actually mm. tastes better. Uh, no. Uh, no, not no, for you? I love food. I love smoking. Um, I quit smoking 30 years ago. It was before I knew you, so it's at least that. Yeah, um, but I enjoyed smoking when I did smoke, and I enjoyed smoking while I ate. Never did that. <laughs> Never did that. You know, put your cigarette out on a plate of finished food. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. God. It was like, what was I? <laughs> I know, but back in the day when I worked in a restaurant, people did that all the time because it was the 70s when I was in high school. People could still smoke cigarettes Younger in people don't even know what it was like back when we could no. smoke everywhere. You used to go out dancing and smoke on the dance floor. Uh, hey! That was terrible. Okay, yeah. uh, so Suzanne is saying hit the like button. Thanks, Suzanne, for reminding everyone. We really appreciate that. If you've enjoyed the live stream you've been watching this evening, we really appreciate it. If you would hit the like button, and if you're not already a subscriber, you can press that red subscribe button and click the bell symbol right next to it. And then next time we do a live stream, which will be next week on Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, you'll get a notice sent to your phone a little while before the broadcast starts to just remind you that we're going to be here in I our kitchen. Done. That, that looks really nice and thick. Yeah. So we've had this on for off about half an hour. So off it goes. Let me show you a close up really quick so you can see how we wound up coming out. There we go. Close up of the chili. That is thickened up very nicely. That looks excellent. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I can't wait to eat a whole bowl full of it. Okay, so let me, uh, everyone is always kind here. That is almost always the case, Bobby. I totally agree with you. Oh, I just, we got our one constant downvote before everyone even showed up. Oh, yeah, that happens every week. Someone, as soon as we put up a new video, there's a downvote. It's like, you know, it's just like, thank you for paying attention. We love you, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, somebody is subscribed. 
they have the notifications on and they immediately respond anytime we do something. So, so they care. It sounds they, like yeah. a fan I mean, to me. Come on. I mean, really, it sounds like a fan. Why would you not watch somebody like that? Okay. T Roy says, yes, thickened up nicely, looks yummy. And it 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 actually is really yeah. yummy, uh -huh. T Roy. I think you would like it if you were here. We might have to put some meat protein in it for T Roy, but that's okay. Well, We've got that. There's meat protein in meat, so okay. So <laughs> okay, so. Ladies, gentlemen, non-binary friends, we have been making for you today a big stockpot, a Martha Stewart enameled cast iron stockpot full of vegetarian three bean chili. We used pinto beans, black beans, and kidney beans. All the ingredients we used are in the description right below where you're watching this live stream. So you can copy and paste the ingredient list for this right into your own digital recipe book, as well as for the lovely lovely and supremely tasty cornbread loaded cornbread loaded. mini muffins they are loaded with bacon cheese pepper peppers as in green pepper and red onions these are so yummy and they're very soft and pillowy on the interior these are really really good and we also showed you how to make a lovely though it's all gone now because it was small so sorry a very lovely so sorry cherry blossom teeny cocktail and it was yummy We've never done a sake cocktail before. I love sake, but just so you know, we used shochikubai sake for this drink. The most popular sake in America. It's really super yummy. So if you like sake, you might just like this cocktail. It's in nice big bottles. Yeah, we get the nice big bottles because it's a lot less expensive. Uh, let's see. So uh, Mr. Homeowner wants to know, when are we going to do the brewmate unboxing for the things we just um, got? Very soon because we can't wait to open the goddamn box. Sorry. <laughs> no cuss words allowed. No cussing. No fussing. In that beautiful box. <laughs> we're we're going to open the box soon. Uh, it's it's going to happen in the next couple of days, Rob, yeah. because we are so excited to have more brewmate cocktail shakers in our collection because I love it that they, they're they not cold when you have to hold on to them. The lid and the they, they fit together really well. They and never leak. Beautiful. Yeah. And they're knocked down gorgeous. We got a glittery one, and we got an iridescent one, and we got the lovely one that you and your wife sent us. Yeah. So we are very happy to have the brewmate in our collection. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rob is also saying, don't worry about Don Votes. YouTube sees it as interaction. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. We're, we actually heard a, a rumor that they were going to get rid of the dislike button oh, entirely. Yeah, yeah. And personally... I'm okay with that because I don't see any reason for all this negativity. You know, if you don't like something, just move on and find something else to watch that you do like and then say something positive about that. It's okay if you don't like certain shows. We know our show and our vibe doesn't appeal to everyone. It doesn't mean there's anything not good about what we're doing. It just means people are attracted to something different. Everyone's their own taste. The old lady, she kissed the cow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Another thing I got my mom. Rob says, sorry to give you a gift that made you spend money. We're not sorry. Our financial advisor is grouchy because we spent too much money on cocktail shakers, but we're not sorry. The first dose is always free. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> well, he warned us. Rob warned us. Now we're addicted. Rob warned us uh, that uh, we were going to get addicted to Brewmate. Uh, he was right. right. As soon as I used it, I was hooked. I was hooked. Bobby says she totally agree. The dislike button is unnecessary. I, I yeah, I'm feeling it, Bobby. We really want to try to be about positivity as much as possible. And yeah, sometimes things go but wrong. It and does let people vent in a non-violent way. Well, so, there's that. Okay, there is uh, that element to it. it it's no hard. You just can afford no. Yeah, so, we actually aren't offended by dislikes. So, it just means people are paying attention. Yeah. So it's not really. I don't take it personally. They need to do that. Then. Oh, that's okay. But, you know, if it was gone, it wouldn't bother me one bit. <laughs> Uh-oh. Somehow I switched the page to a different format. Oh, that I happened. don't know how I did that. You clicked the wrong thing. I did click the wrong thing. And I think I accidentally deleted somebody's message. But, Oops. Oh, well. Oops. Sorry. If I just deleted your message, don't take it personally. It I hit the wrong button. So, so sorry. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, what we've got going on here. There we go. Oh, Ralph says loves the fabulous right, right, right. zebra print shirts. Mm -hmm. Philip's going to take his apron off so you can see the whole pattern on these shirts because they're actually very, very cute. 
Uh, if you're wondering, these shirts come from the same place we get most of our colorful Ooh. shirts we wear on our show, and that's Amazon.com. So here's what the whole zebra pattern looks like that you can see without it being covered up with an apron. It's kind of like a really fashionable jail print. From the, back. the black and white stripe, but there's zebra stripe. It's very cool. We actually have a zebra tablecloth, zebra placemats. We have zebra pillows on the couch. I have a zebra snuggie to wear, and we have zebra shirts now. I don't think you can have too much animal print personally. I personally like zebra, but I'm also okay with leopard, you know, giraffe, cow. You know, zebra is being black and white. It goes with any other color. Well, Susanna's making a good point. She got thumbs down on a video where her five-year-old niece was making a cake with her. Really? I know, I know she's saying really. I'm like, I know, Suzanne, really? Like, who says something negative about a lovely five-year-old girl okay. baking a cake with her grandma? My I mother mean, always said, like? my mother, my mother. Um, no, consider no. the source, okay? Which is exactly kind of what Karen's People saying. It's are, ridiculous. It's just... It, it, People got to go spread their People, negativity around and we can just let feel, it wash over We us. can feel sorry for them. Well, or we can just hope that they can find something more interesting to do with their time than spread negativity around the planet. So mm, uh, yeah. Jess says still, Jess yeah. likes leopard print. Okay, yeah. Jess, we're going to look for some leopard print shirts in your honor. We've seen lots. There's a standard, you know, leopard leopard print. Then there's colorful versions of it. Which yes. Are Hot pink leopard print. Oh, hello. Actually, we found some really supremely cool leopard print jackets from opposuits.com. If you've watched our show in the past, sometimes when we do party videos, we wear our opposuits jackets, which are these fun jackets with nice big shoulder pads, and they're structured and fun, and they have really wild really out of the and box they fit patterns. Us big guys really nicely. Yeah, they are sized right because they can fit larger size men like us. Even though they're um they're cut in what's called a skinny cut, we just order two sizes larger and then they fit perfectly. And then we look fabulous. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, Tom's saying if I vote thumbs down and leave a comment, why? Like bad sanitary skills, too much onion, or bad video <laughs> or audio. <laughs> Yeah, Those well. are good reasons to give a thumbs down. <laughs> you know, sometimes the quality of our live streams aren't what we would hope it would be, which actually has nothing to do with anything that we're doing. So we try to cut people slack when their video isn't as clear as it could be. But we do agree, bad sanitation skills in the kitchen. Yeah, that really needs a comment. <laughs> yeah, that does deserve a comment and possibly, you know, a little talk. What were to. you thinking? <laughs> yes, we know. Uh, let's see. Uh, embrace the thumbs down. That's what Mr. Homeowner says. Expect him and know that the person is angry at something, but keep on going. Yeah. Well, like we said before, Rob, we operate out of the fact that if someone paid enough attention to give a thumbs down, then we've succeeded. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Even if you didn't like what you saw, you paid enough attention to form an opinion about it. And, and that's okay with us. And they're okay. And people are okay. We don't. Sunset is asking if Rula likes zebra print. Rula likes everything that Mitch likes. And, and Rula, as in our redheaded friend that pops in and out of the videos once in a while. Oh. It's yeah. a character I created. I've only done it twice. And the first time I did it, it was really funny. The second time, maybe not so much. But yeah, I just put on this big rock star wig that's a bright, shocking red color. And it's very curly and fluffy. And that's all I did was put on a rock star wig and some big sort of, you know, rock and roll kind of sunglasses. And I said something in a Russian accent. And so many people loved it. I think we're going to have to create a channel just for Rula. And we named him Rula Red. And some people think Rula is a girl. Rula is a man who likes to wear wigs, which is not that different from me because I wear wigs all the time. Who remembers Rula Lenska? Well, that's what the motivation was for. My eyes are blue. No, wait, wait. Something was blue, her eyes are green, her hair is bright red. No. Uh, what was it? My eyes are blue, my hair is red, and my dress is vivid green. That's what she said. If you remember when TV switched from black and white to color, as some of us do, <laughs> <laughs> that was when that was the NBC Peacock. Woohoo! Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Rob is saying he missed the June Evan shout out. Okay, so uh, just uh, let me give another shout out to the June. Right over here on the back counter is our lovely June Intelligent Oven. 
which we use every single day. And it bakes up things really, really, really well. It uses a lot less energy than the built-in oven, which is right here under the stove. And it doesn't make the whole kitchen get hot, yeah, which is great. It like that. Yeah, it heats up really, really fast. So that's the June oven shout out. It's uh, smaller. Some things have to be have to do in this oven because it's, it's they're too big for the June. Yeah. But that's only a few things. Only a few things. Everything else, yeah, in there because it's just. Suzanne says, bring back Rula. We'll bring him back one of these days. I'll show up dressed as Rula and I'll talk in a Russian accent through the entire live stream. I'll come up my own character. That's going to be hard to do. And we'll, we'll do alter egos maybe, you know, a little further, maybe for Halloween. That's something we could pull off. I've been working on names. Yes. <laughs> well, I can't repeat here. <laughs> no, we have to come up with something. <laughs> we have to come up with something PG rated because we try. Family those of you know, we know we actually have a lot of viewers who watch our show with their kids. And so we try to zip our lip when it comes to too many F-bombs and Same. things like that. Good Occasionally good. something slips out. But we do our best to try to set a good example <laughs> as yeah. much as we can with what we have to We're work We're setting with. a good example here. <laughs> About drinking Cheers. yourself. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Mm. Oops. Okay, so we're to the point we're where done. the chili is thickened up. Let me just show you another Thank close you up really quick. <laughs> There's the thickened up chili. Let's do a quick split screen. There we go. Nice, yeah. thick, yeah, nice lovely thick. chili. Yeah. That yeah, looks yeah. really good now, people. It's super yummy. Okay, so we're about at the end of our time frame for tonight. Yep. We really appreciate you being with us. Vegetarian chili. Lovely, loaded cornbread, not vegetarian at all no this isn't vegetarian <laughs> at all this is this is not these are really good so and choose wife the cherry blossom teeny cocktail which is really yummy and it, departure we need more bourbon we need more bourbon yeah we've only done a couple of bourbon videos and then we did a bourbon cocktail video for josh and babe for the cooking cop and babe channel many of you are familiar with josh and babe's lovely channel we did a couple videos for them back when they were on hiatus and so we're going to do some more bourbon cocktails coming up. So we really appreciate you guys being here. Bourbon cocktail. Thank you so much for joining us. Suzanne, it's lovely to see you as always. Karen, thank you so much. Jess, Ralph, Rob, Bobby Joe. Uh, let me see. I want to make sure I said Sunset. Tom. Uh, I want to go back up here and make sure I, I said you this Bobby. Sunset. And Mr. Blue. Blue. And T Roy and Jess and Tom and Leanne and Ellis, Janine. Okay, if I missed you saying your name personally, please know that we really appreciate you being here. We're going to fill up some bowls with this lovely chili and we're going to go sit on the couch and watch some of your videos from your YouTube channel while we have vegetarian chili dinner with some loaded cornbread muffins on the side. And I'm going to mix up this man over here, a fresh cocktail. Yes, we need more alcohol. <laughs> so, okay, peeps, okay. thank you so much for joining us. Ginger Snap Kitchen. Hey, Ginger Snap, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. And let's see. Oh, Best Yet Journey says hello and good night. Just in time to see us on the way out. Great to see you, Best Yet. Thank you for taking care of, uh, taking time to come and visit us this afternoon. Ellis, we really appreciate you joining us. It's always a pleasure to see your avatar across our screen. Thank you so much. Okay, peeps, we are on the way Time out of here. And we'll see you next Mwah. Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And sometime now between now and then, we'll probably have another live stream. And we're going to unbox a couple of more Brewmate cocktail shakers. And then we're going to tell you all about what we think about them. We're going to give you a thorough review as well as a test and show you how those cocktail shakers work. They are awesome products. And we love them. Okay, everyone. Y'all be careful out there. We'll be thinking of you, and we look forward to seeing you again very, very, very soon. And thanks. Be sure and hit the thumbs up, the likes button. If you're not already subscribed, smash that red subscribe button. We really appreciate you guys being here. We'll be back with you next Tuesday, if not sooner. And I'm Mitch. I'm Philip. We're the Kitchen Queers, coming to you from San Francisco, California. And we are out of here, peeps.